I have to, on this point, you had this conversation you put on your sub stack uh, with Jordan, uh, Jordan Peterson about cognitive inequality. I think it's titled Wrestling with Cognitive Inequality. Yeah. This particular topic of just IQ differences between groups, why is this, why is it so dangerous to talk about? Why this particular topic? Well, it's like you're calling black people inferior. It's like you're saying they're genetically inferior. That's what people are saying. It's like you're rationalizing the disparity of outcomes by reference to the intrinsic inferiority of black people. If you, th if you say cognitive ability matters for social outcomes, if you say cognitive ability exists, people really are different in terms of their intellectual functioning. And if you say cognitive ability differences are, are, are substantial between racially defined populations, the sum of that, there is cognitive ability, it matters and it differs by race, is the conclusion that outcome differences by race are in part due to natural differences between the populations. People find that to be completely offensive and unacceptable. So that's what I think is going on. Can you steal me on that case that we should be careful doing that kind of research? So uh, this has to do with research. It's like uh, the Nazis used Nietzsche in their propaganda, right? Is You can use, white supremacists could use conclusions, um, cherry pick conclusions of studies to uh, to push their uh, to push their agenda. Can you steal me on the case that we should be careful? Yeah, I could do it at three levels. One is, what do we mean by cognitive ability? So there's many different kinds of intelligence a person might say. How good are IQ tests at measuring other kinds of human capacities that are pertinent to success in life, like temperament, uh, like emotional intelligence, and so on. So intelligence is not a one-dimensional thing measured by G. The uh, cognitive psychologists talk about G, the general intelligence factor, which is a statistical construction. It's a factor analytic uh, resolution of the correlation across individuals in their performance on a battery of different kinds of tests. And they use that to, to define a general factor of intelligence. And a person could say, that is a very narrow view of what human mental capacities actually are, and that uh, it, it's much better to think about multi-dimensional uh, measures of human mental functioning rather than a single cognitive ability measure, a so-called IQ, uh, which is a narrow uh, construction that doesn't capture all of the uh, subtle nuance of human difference in functioning. Functioning is not just the ability to uh, recite backwards a sequence of numbers. I say eight, seven, nine, five, three, two. You say two, three, five, seven, eight, nine. It's not just that. Intelligence is a complex uh, management of many different dimensions of human performance, including uh, uh, things like being able to stick with a task and, and not give up uh, things like being able to discipline and control your impulses so as to remain focused and so forth. Um, that could be one dimension. I could start by questioning the very foundation of the argument for racial differences in uh, cognitive ability by saying that your measure of cognitive ability is uh, flawed. I could go to a higher level. I, I could say what we're really interested in is social outcomes and the question of what factors influence social outcomes extends well beyond mental ability to many other things. So here's an example. Um, visual acuity. How well do you see? You're not wearing glasses. I am. Visual acuity varies between human beings. Some people see better than other people do. Visual acuity can be measured. I can put you at the chart and you can, can you identify and read that bottom line in small print or not? So we can measure visual acuity and it varies between human beings. Visual acuity is partly genetic. I think that's undoubtedly true. We inherit genes that influence whether or not we are nearsighted or farsighted or astigmatic or whatever. 
So visual acuity differs between people and can be measured and is under genetic control. On the other hand, corrective lenses allow for us to level the playing field between people who are differently endowed in terms of visual acuity. Likewise, social outcomes are what we're really interested in, employment, earnings, uh, whether or not they're law-abiding, how do they conduct themselves and their families and so forth amongst individuals. Yes, social outcomes are influenced by so-called cognitive ability, but they're influenced by many other things as well. If, they can, if there are interventions that can be undertaken in society that level the playing field between people who have different natural endowments of cognitive ability, the fact that people or groups differ in cognitive ability becomes less significant, just like it's less significant that people differ with respect to how well they see when corrective lenses allow for the leveling of that playing field. There are, in fact, interventions, educational interventions, early childhood interventions that have been shown to level the playing field to create better life outcomes for people, even if they happen to be endowed with low intelligence. So a second level of arguing against this whole program of research on human differences in intelligence is to observe that, yes, human beings and perhaps racially defined groups may differ on the average in intellectual endowment, but there well may be social interventions that level the playing field, whether it's in education or in uh, other kinds of uh, programmatic interventions, especially for the poor. A final level of argument is the one that you alluded to, which is that if you talk like this, you're going to encourage a kind of politics which is very ugly, and it's best to frame the discussion in ways that don't put emphasis on Uh, racially defined natural differences between populations. Uh, That's an argument that I am myself personally uh, conflicted about. On the one hand, I think, you know, those people are just stupid. It is uh, racist, okay? On the other hand, I think the, the calculation, we shouldn't do this kind of research. Suppose I'm at the National Science Foundation. A research team submits a proposal. The proposal proposes to undertake a study. The study would explore the extent to which people and racial groups differ with respect to their intellectual performance and how that's influenced by their genetic and environmental interaction. And I decide not to fund the study based on a political calculation that the subject is too sensitive And if you explore that uh, subject, you might get the wrong answer. And if you get the wrong answer, the white supremacists will be encouraged. Well, that is presuming before the research is done that I know the outcome of the research and that I can calculate what the political consequence of the research outcome is going to be. That's that's assuming the thing before you even know what the thing actually is. It's it's a kind of omniscience. It, It presumes that you as the master of the universe can tell people what it is that people are being treated like children, what it is that they're capable of knowing and what it is that they're not capable of knowing. It would be like someone saying to Einstein, uh, I don't know about that special relativity theory. You know, it could well lead to uh, the development of technologies that would allow nuclear weapons. Or someone saying to Oppenheimer, who is a physicist overseeing the Manhattan Project where the U.S. developed a nuclear weapons capacity, don't carry out that project because uh, the results of acquiring that knowledge may be more than we can deal with. Or someone saying to someone doing uh, biomedical research who's interested in exploring uh, the nature of the human genome, don't carry out that experiment, that cloning uh, undertaking, whatever, because the consequences could be uh, deleterious. Well, the consequences could be deleterious. The consequences could also be the cure of cancer. The consequences could also be being able to generate electric power without producing carbon effluent. Uh, so who, who are you to tell me, who you being the person in the political position to control the research, what the consequence of doing the research is? I, I think I don't want to cede that kind of power to politicians over the course of, of human inquiry. So yes, I would want there to be regulations governing the use of biologically sensitive and potentially dangerous uh, pathogens in a lab in Wuhan uh, or any place else. I would I would not want to simply leave that to laissez-faire. Uh, on the other hand, I think 
that the tendency to try to shut down inquiry on behalf of supposed adverse political consequences is the road to ignorance and uh, impoverishment at the end of the day for humankind, denying ourselves the potential benefits of that kind of inquiry. I think we need to take our chances with inquiry rather than to try to control it. And I feel that way about the exploration of human intelligence as much as anything else. So you've asked me to steel man the case against research on IQ of the sort that, that Charles Murray is famous for popularizing. And I've said, A, your measure of intelligence is single dimensional and it ought to be multidimensional. I've said, B, the consequences of people's differing in intelligence depends not only on the natural endowments of the people, but also on the uh, environment and the potential for intervening in that environment, environment through one or another kind of instrument as the metaphorical example of the use of corrective lenses to level the playing field between people with different uh, visual acuity uh, uh, indicates. But finally, I've said, yes, research on racial differences in IQ can foster um, uh, political beliefs that we would regard to be um, noxious. On the other hand, to presume that what we don't know yet and might find out from the research is going to be harmful is to assume a kind of presumption or of knowing what the outcome of unknown processes might be, which we ought to be very slow to embrace. Because if we had done so in the past, we wouldn't have nuclear power. Uh, there's a lot of things that we wouldn't know. I mean, what were people saying about Darwin and uh, exploration of the evolution and origin of the species? They were afraid that it was going to, in effect, disprove the uh, religious-based accounts of, you know, what were they saying about Copernicus and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know. That was a masterful <laughs> layering of, uh, quote, wrestling with uh, cognitive inequality. He dragged in nuclear research, uh, uh, Copernicus, Darwin, biomedical research with genetics, even COVID and... and um, uh, the lab leak. I mean, this that was that that was just fun to listen to. Okay. Okay. Uh,